The next night, she again stole out to see him. He was alive but very weak. He could only open his eyes for a moment to look at Thumbelina, who stood by, holding a piece of decayed wood in her hand, for she had no other lantern. "'Thank you, pretty little maiden,' said the sick swallow. "'I have been so nicely warmed that I shall soon regain my strength and be able to fly about again in the warm sunshine.' Oh, said she, it is cold out of doors now. It snows and freezes. Stay in your warm bed. I will take care of you. She brought the swallow some water in a flower leaf, and after he had drunk, he told her that he had wounded one of his wings in a thorn bush and could not fly as fast as the others, who were soon far away on their journey to warm countries. At last he had fallen to the earth and could remember nothing more, nor how he came to where she had found him. All the winter the swallow remained underground, and Thumbelina nursed him with care and love, for she did not tell either the mole or the field mouse anything about it, for they did not like swallows. Very soon the springtime came, and the sun warmed the earth. Then the swallow bade farewell to Thumbelina, and she opened the hole in the ceiling which the mole had made. The sun shone in upon them so beautifully that the swallow asked her if she would go with him. She could sit on his back, he said, and he would fly away with her into the green woods, but she knew it would grieve the field mouse if she loved her in that manner, so she said, No, I cannot. Farewell, then, farewell, you good, pretty little maiden, said the swallow, and he flew out into the sunshine. Thumbelina looked after him, and the tears rose in her eyes. She was very fond of the poor swallow. Tweet, tweet, sang the bird as he flew out into the green woods, and Thumbelina felt very sad. She was not allowed to go out into the warm sunshine. The corn which had been sowed in the field over the house of the field mouse had grown up high into the air and formed a thick wood to Thumbelina, who was only an inch in height. "'You're going to be married, little one,' said the field mouse. "'My neighbor has asked for you. What good fortune for a poor child like you. Now, go up and prepare for your wedding clothes. There must be wool and linen. Nothing must be wanting when you are the wife of the mole.' Thumbelina had to turn the spindle, and the field mouse hired four spiders, who were to weave day and night. Every evening the mole visited her, and constantly spoke of the time when the summer would be over. Then he would keep his wedding day with Thumbelina, but now the heat of the sun was so great that it burned the earth and made it hard like stone. As soon as the summer was over, the wedding should happen, but Thumbelina was not at all pleased, for she did not like the annoying mole. Every morning when the sun rose and every evening when it went down, she would creep out at the door, and as the wind blew aside the ears of corn, so that she could see the blue sky. She thought how beautiful and bright it seemed out there, and wished so much to see her dear friend the swallow again. But he never returned, for by this time he had flown far away into the lovely green forest. When autumn arrived, Thumbelina had her outfit quite ready, and the field mouse said to her, In four weeks the wedding must take place. Then she wept and said that she would not marry the disagreeable mole. "'Nonsense!' replied the field mouse. "'Now don't be obstinate, or I shall bite you with my white teeth. "'He is a very handsome mole. "'The queen herself does not wear more beautiful velvets and furs. "'His kitchens and cellars are quite full. "'You ought to be thankful for such great fortune.' "'So the wedding day was set, "'on which the mole was to take her away to live with him, "'deep under the earth, and never again to see the warm sun, "'because he did not like it.' The poor child was very unhappy at the thought of saying good-bye to the beautiful sun, and the field mouse had given her permission to stand at the door. She went to look at it once more. "'Bright sun!' she cried, stretching out her arm towards it, and then she walked a short distance from the house where the corn had been cut, and only the dry stubble remained in the fields. "'Farewell! Farewell!' she repeated twining her arm around a little red flower that grew just by her side. Greet the little swallow for me, if you should see him again. Tweet, tweet, sounded over her head suddenly, 
She looked up, and there was the swallow himself flying close by. As soon as he spied Thumbelina, he was delighted. She told him how unwilling she was to marry the ugly mole, and to live always beneath the earth, never again to see the bright sun. And as she told him, she wept. "'Cold winter is coming,' said the swallow. "'I'm going to fly away into warmer countries. "'Will you go with me? "'You can sit on my back and fasten yourself on with your stash. "'Then we can fly away from the ugly mole in his gloomy rooms, "'far away over the mountains, into warmer countries, "'where the sun shines more brightly here than there. "'Where is always summer, and the flowers bloom in greater beauty. "'Fly now with me, dear little one. "'You saved my life when I lay frozen in that dark, dreary passage.' "'Yes, I will go with you,' said Thumbelina, "'and she seated herself on the bird's back "'with her feet on his outstretched wings "'and tied her girdle to one of his strongest feathers. "'The swallow rose in the air "'and flew over the forest and over sea high "'above the highest mountains, "'covered with eternal snow. "'Thumbelina would have been frozen in the cold air, "'but she crept under the bird's warm feathers, "'keeping her little head uncovered "'so she might admire the beautiful lands "'over which they had passed.' At length they reach the warm countries, where the sun shines brightly, and the sky seems much higher above the earth. Here on the hedges and by the wayside grew purple, green, and white grapes. Lemons and oranges hung from the trees in the fields, and the air was filled with myrtles and orange blossoms. Beautiful children ran along the country lanes, playing with large, beautiful butterflies. And as the swallow flew farther and farther, every place appeared still more lovely. At last they came to a blue lake, and by the side of it, shaded by trees of the deepest green, stood a palace of dazzling white marble, built long ago. Vines clustered round its lofty pillars, and at the top were many swallows' nests, and one of these was the home of the swallow who carried Thumbelina. "'This is my house,' said the swallow, but it would not work for you. You would not be comfortable. You must choose one for yourself.' Of one of these lovely flowers, and then we'll pull you down upon it, and then you'll have everything that you can wish to make you happy. That'll be delightful, she said, and clapped her little hands for joy. A large marble pillar lay on the ground, which had fallen and broken into three pieces. Between these pieces grew the most beautiful large white flowers, so the swallow flew down with Thumbelina and placed her on one of the broad leaves. But how surprised she was to see in the middle of the flower a tiny little man, as white and transparent as if he had been made of crystal. He had a gold crown on his head and delicate wings on his shoulders, and was not much larger than was she herself. He was the angel of the flower, for a tiny man and a tiny woman lay in every flower, and this was the king of them all. "'How beautiful he is!' whispered Thumbelina to the swallow. The little prince was at first quite frightened at the bird, who was like a giant compared to such a delicate little creature as himself. But when he saw Thumbelina, he was delighted and thought her the prettiest little maiden he had ever seen. He took the gold crown from his head and placed it on hers, and asked her name and if she would be his wife and queen over all the flowers.' This certainly was a very different sort of husband from the son of the toad or the mole with his black velvet and fur. So she said yes to the handsome prince. Then all the flowers opened, and out of each came a little lady or a tiny lord. All so pretty, it was quite a pleasure to look at them. Each of them brought Thumbelina a present, but the best gift was a pair of beautiful wings, which had belonged to a large white fly and they fastened them to Thumbelina's shoulders, so she might fly from flower to flower. Then there was much celebrating, and the little swallow who sat above them in his nest was asked to sing a wedding song, which he did as well as he could, but in his heart he felt sad, for he was very fond of Thumbelina, and would have liked never to part from her again. "'You must not be called Thumbelina any more,' said the spirit of flowers to her. "'It is an ugly name.' "'and you are so very lovely. "'We will call you Maya.' "'Farewell, farewell,' said the swallow with a heavy heart, "'as he left the warm countries to fly back into Denmark. "'There he had a nest over the window of a house "'in which lived the writer of fairy tales. 
The swallows sang tweet tweet, and from his song came the whole story.